Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with an exclusive concerning Zen 3. So, there has been an awful lot of leaks concerning the upcoming architecture from AMD, as well as official confirmation from the company itself. For example, Forrest Norad has confirmed that Zen 3 will feature a IPC lift which would be in line with a new processor architecture. It's not going to be a slight bump. And we've also seen numerous leaks as well which seem to indicate much the same thing. Indeed, recently one of my sources told me we would see an at least 8% IPC gains compared to Zen 2. Also recently, Bits and Chips on Twitter confirmed that we would see a 40% increase in the bandwidth for level 1 cache, though he's not too certain what's going on with the amount of cache on the chip, nor what's happening with level 2 cache, and so on and so on. There have also been numerous reports that we would see an increase in the amount of level 3 cache, though, potentially spurred on by an official confirmation of sorts anyway from AMD themselves where they put a uh, slide in a presentation which was not supposed to be public showing that we would see 32 megabytes plus per CCX along with what you can clearly see is a rather different layout for the CCX. Okay, so what new information do I have for you? Well, it comes down to the floating point performance of the CPU. I'd been told quite a long time ago, around the time of the Zen 2 leaks, I believe, that a priority for AMD was to bump up the floating point performance for Zen, and obviously they made some rather significant strides for Zen 2 as well with floating point performance. But apparently they wanted to continue to push this for the data center, for scientific computing, and so on and so on. Well, recently I heard from another source that floating point performance was greater in terms of a gain compared to traditional workloads, but I wasn't given any specifics. Then recently, Bits and Chips on Twitter, uh, once again reported on this a couple of days ago, revealed that according to his sources, the uh, level 1 cache had an increased bandwidth by about 40% compared to Zen 2. I then started to speak to him in private about this and also what I'd heard about the IPC games for Zen 3. Anyway, he then came back to me and said that that sounds about right, but it does depend upon the workloads, and he's heard for scientific workloads it could be up to 50% IPC gains. By the way, do give Bits and Chips a follow. I'll link, of course, his Twitter in the description of this video. So after Bits and Chips told me this information, I reached out to a couple of my sources who had proven to be reliable in the past and fed me a lot of Zen 2 information. Anyway, they eventually got back to me and told me that they had heard much the same thing. One of them was very, very vague in his answer and said he can't really tell me much other than that's pretty accurate. Another person told me it's down to floating point enhancements, although he's not exactly sure what they're doing architecturally to facilitate that. Once again, though, we have seen numerous slides that AMD have released themselves, and we do know that the architecture is going to be rather different, but we only kind of have like a top-level view of the architecture. If this information is true, and at the end of the day, it could be inaccurate, but if this information is true, what my several sources have told me, it's going to put Intel in a very, very, very uncomfortable place in 2020. AMD are being ultra aggressive right now. Um, it's they, they are an entirely different company. They are just a machine. They are not like, oh, we're going to release one architecture and then we're going to kind of sit in our hands and whatever happens, happens, and eventually we'll put something else out. Or we're going to really rely on, let's say, the 7NM process and then the shift down to 7NM plus and so on. No, they are being absolutely brutal. Every single architecture they are releasing has major enhancements. You can argue about the Zen Plus architecture not really bringing anything significant to the table, but if you think about it, it was actually a pretty nice architecture, particularly for the second generation thread rippers, which were just bonkers compared to the first generation. And anyway, the 2700X, you can argue, was a pretty significant step up with the IPC enhancements, higher clock frequency, yada, yada, yada. It's going to be really interesting to me what happens over the next couple of years. I do believe Intel can make a comeback, 
but boy, they're going to have their work cut out for them. And speaking of Intel, I do have a couple of Intel pieces of news. One of them concerns yet another test board for their discrete GPU. There is very little information that officially has been released about this GPU, although Chris Hook on Twitter said that it's alive and Intel's uh, graphics team have basically indicated that the GPU seems to be of a lower power derivative. And of course, we have those rather infamous driver leaks now, which lists the number of execution units on the GPU. Assuming that's accurate, although, to be honest with you, several of my sources have told me that it seems to be very, very accurate for what Intel's working on. However, I have heard that there is a higher tier GPU for XC that has double the number of execution units, but only one source has told me that and has provided me very little information. So I would take that with a massive truckload of salt. Anyway, let's switch to what we know about now. So credit to Kimachi on Twitter for the discovery of this EAEUnion.org entry. And it is, of course, from the Intel Corporation. As a slight aside, am I the only one that is heavily disappointed that the phone number ends in 8080? Why could it not end in 8686? Anyway, um, so the name of the product is Data Processing Unit Discrete Graphics DG18 Plus 2 Windows External Prod Host SDP Alpha. Unfortunately, that's not exactly super duper clear what the specifications are of this GPU, but there may be some clues in the 8 plus 2. Kamachi himself actually believes that it is the number of sub slices on the GPU, and honestly, it makes sense. So, if you look back at these slides for generation 11, there are 8 execution units per sub slice, but this was changed for generation 12. They increased the number of execution units to 16 per sub slice. So whether they are changing things for discrete graphics or not, we don't know exactly, but it wouldn't really make sense for them to change it. I suspect that it's been going to be consistent for a while. So this would mean that we have 128 execution units for DG1. And another reason that we can probably guess that that's accurate, and yes, you guessed it, I'm going to bring the driver thing back up again. But lo and behold, DG1 is listed right there, and the lowest entry under DG2 is 128, and that is the Gen 12 HP. So the Gen 12 LP probably has at least, uh, sorry, at most, the same number of execution units. I'm guessing there's probably a clock speed difference, although, of course, we don't know fully what Intel will be doing with the low power variants or slash DG1. So my guess is that we are looking at 128 um, execution units on this particular GPU, which would mean that it is distinctly low power. It's not going to be a high performance GPU. And finally, I'd like to bring your attention to HW Info, and thanks to several people who actually emailed me concerning the changelog for this particular piece of software. Specifically, there is a mention for support, enhanced support, excuse me, of Intel's Rocket Lake processors. We still know next to nothing, to be honest, concerning Rocket Lake. It is going to be the successor to Comet Lake. Comet Lake launches at least from the rumours, in the first quarter of 2020. It's looking like it's going to be around February. And, of course, Comet Lake is still based on Skylake, albeit nudging the number of processor cores up to 10 with 20 threads and adding hyper-threading to basically everything. But with Rocket Lake, we know very little. Uh, we know that it's on the 14NM process and allegedly launches about a year later, and some people believe it is Skylake based, although I've been told it's a backport of a later architecture. I've been told it's uh, potentially Sunny Cove. So it's going to be really interesting if it isn't that. Um, because, quite frankly, I just don't know how Intel can slightly get away with releasing a uh, Skylake based architecture in let's say 2021, which would be up against the Ryzen 4000 series or Ryzen maybe even 5000 series by that point. Yeah, I don't actually see how that they would even consider doing that, but who knows? 
With any luck, you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then of course, leave a like on it because it helps us out a ton, and also get subscribed to the channel for much more upcoming content. You can also follow us on social media, which is naturally linked in the video description. And with any luck, I will see you soon. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, with the Black Friday sales coming on right now, particularly on something like Amazon, we have Amazon affiliate links in the video description. So if you do want to use them, we would greatly appreciate it. It gives us a couple of bucks for each of your purchases. It doesn't cost you anything. And of course we can put that money into buying new equipment for the channel. Like we've just recently bought a Ryzen 7 3700X and we're gonna be upgrading a few other bits and pieces with your kind support on Patreon as well as Amazon affiliates. So thanks very much for that. But with all of that said, I apologize for a slightly croaky voice. As regular viewers will know, I've been not feeling too great recently. I've been hit with the uh, plague, but I'm starting to get on the road for recovery. But unfortunately, it's left my voice a little bit croaky. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.